good morning YouTube and the internet. Today I'm forced to work on the Falcon. There's two problems I've got with the Falcon at the moment. One's been a persistent problem where um, when it's cold when you first start it, it tends to want to uh, stall. Check engine light comes on. Uh, doesn't happen all the time. It tends to happen more in summer when it's a bit warmer and it's happened just now. So, see the check engine lights come on? Now while it's idling fine, for now, if I try to continue to drive, it's going to drop to about three cylinders, maybe four. Uh, it misses quite badly. It's effectively gone into a lip mode. So, it only happens once. Here we go. Maybe you can hear that over the aircon. The engine shaking like all get out. So shutting the car off, restarting it fixes that problem. So, uh, also if I give the car a couple minutes to warm up, it doesn't do it. I think that's a throttle position sensor problem. I need to get an OBD reader on it and just check the fault codes for that. The other problem which just started happening two days ago um, driving under load, uh, it's misfiring. So it's fine cruising, normal driving up to speed, but when you come up to a set of lights that are like this one here, where you've got two lanes and you get the left lane, you want to shoot out in front of the other guy, and you try and launch quickly, uh, or try and accelerate hard from moving, it, uh, it breaks down, it starts missing. So it just kills your acceleration. There's no fuel smoke or anything coming out the back when it happens, so I don't think it's injectors being stuck open. Um, try it. doing it now and it's vibrating, and then it clears itself and it comes good. That, I believe, is the um, is a call pack. I'm extremely confident in that. The same thing happened in my old 33. Uh, when you try and hit it, and as soon as it made boost, that would snuff out the spark, the core pack was, was dying, so that's what was going on there. Had a quick look this morning on the, on the old BA forums and it seems to be the consensus it's the core pack, so with my previous experience and that extra evidence, I'm almost certain it's the core pack. So I'm on my way down to Supercheck to buy a core pack. Not just one though, uh, got to buy the full set and replace all of them because if one's going, odds are the others are probably soon to follow. Um, from what I can tell, 150,000 Ks is about the least you'll get out of a factory call pack. And this has done 158,000, so what's on the low side is certainly in the range for them to start mailing. So just down, heading down to Super Cheap now, and we will get ourselves a set of call packs, go home, and replace them. I can uh, make it mess, turn the AC off, so you might have a chance of hearing it. Just let the traffic get away a bit and then floor it. Ah, and it works perfectly, it doesn't miss a beat. <laughs> of course it does, I'm filming. So we'll go again, just ease off a little bit. And then try and accelerate. Oh, it's done it there a little bit. Um, yeah, basically it stutters, it's effectively missing on one cylinder and then after a while of driving, like on the trip home from work, it will um, start missing every few seconds on one cylinder while stopped at lights. So it gets slightly worse and it's just, you know, that's the coil pack breaking down further and further as it gets hotter and hotter I think. Coil packs are susceptible to heat. The hotter they get, the um, more likely they are to uh, develop a mess when they're starting to fail. That's the other thing, it's not hot really at the moment. I mean, it's a hot day, but the engine's not really hot. Did a little bit there, but not a lot. Anyway, you get the picture. It's a 
break down a spark, you lose acceleration, you lose power. Uh, it's only running on five cylinders. And so what happens then is you end up with a gut full of fuel going through the O2 sensor. The ECU doesn't know what to make of it. You just It just goes, oh, I don't know what's going on. And you just lose power. Uh, I'm surprised it doesn't throw an engine light. Uh, possibly the O2 sensor is not capable of causing that. I would have thought it would be, at least in the lean condition, because that's dangerous. So maybe in the rich condition it doesn't, because that's not as much of a threat. All it's going to do is foul up your plugs. The other option is it is spark plugs, but the plugs in this are iridium, and they're only about 50,000 Ks old, which means they are not the likely culprit. If I replace these coil packs and it does it, continues to break break down loose spark I will uh, I'll replace the plugs next well I'll at least inspect them I should be able to identify which uh, which coil pack it is simply by um, inspecting the plugs oh shiny a couple of weeks ago there was an, a, like a 1968 Shelby Cobra or something of that vintage rag top. There's photos on my um, Instagram of that. It's a beautiful car. Let's, uh, let's try this again. A bit more temp. Oh, I don't know if you could hear that, but it was definitely doing it there. Just missing on one cylinder and just refusing to really accelerate. It was going faster, but not a lot. Once you're cruising, when there's no load, it has no effect on it. That's the other indicator that it's the, uh, the coil packs. Because if it was just fouled up plugs, it would do it all the time, not just when under load. Anyway, pretty much here. We'll uh, come back to you when we're done. So I've just gone and bought those coil packs and the first time I needed to sort of accelerate in the car on the way home, did a really good job of misfiring, so hopefully it's almost green. So when this light goes green, I'll floor it to accelerate away hard and I assume what's going to happen is nothing. I'm going to go nowhere, very slowly accelerate. It's a horrible misfire doing this so you guys who are watching this know exactly what the symptoms are for the faulty coil pack. I imagine the camera would have picked that up. So yeah, that's the misfire. And the more I drive, the worse it will get. Uh, so the coil packs get more and more heat soaked. Anyway, go home shortly and uh, we'll swap them out and that should fix the problem. There is another way to, there's a way to test this, uh, which you just need to be very careful, you, without having to drive the car, um, you start the car, warm it up in your driveway, and I'm not recommending this, but this is a way just to check the, the misfire on the load, um, you can put the handbrake on, put it in gear, stand on your brakes, and accelerate. So that sh the handbrake and the foot brake combined should prevent you from going anywhere, uh, but at the same time puts the engine under high load because it can't go anywhere and it's trying to accelerate, and it should replicate the mess fire that you get when you're driving. It's not good for the transmission to do that, so I don't recommend doing it that way, but if you do it once to double check for diagnostic purposes, you probably get away with it without too much problem. But if you do do it and you blow your transmission apart, um, yeah, I don't want you coming at me. It's, uh, yeah, I just find somewhere quiet. You can test the car on the road like I have. The most annoying thing about it is right now I'd normally go up the left side of this guy, accelerate hard away, and beat him with a single lane. Can't do it. 
I have to drive behind this guy because if I go next to him and try and accelerate hard, uh, we'll probably still be beside each other and it's one lane. That's no good. So YouTube and the internet, since I got back home, I'm about to uh, install these new coil packs. These ones are not the OE ones. I had a look at the reviews and the usage of these caliber ones. They seem to be okay. The OE ones are apparently the best option, but today's Australia Day. Therefore, I'm not going to be able to get OE ones today. And I need to fix this because I've got to move house in a couple of weeks. And I don't have time to be uh, messing around with other things. So, these are what I'm going to use. And we'll see how they go. I'm sure they'll last a couple of weeks at least. Uh, they're on special today too. Super cheap had some pretty good specials on Australia Day. I hope you got something. So, first thing you've got to do is get access to the other the old core packs. Now I've done a video on this before, but um, I didn't actually replace them at the time because I didn't need to. Now I do. So first we've got to get the cover off. To get the cover off, we've got to get the air intake off. Get the air intake off. We need two bolts here. And then this just pulls off, these just pull off, these two hoses. Uh, the PCV back here comes out, this hose comes out of the way out the back. And then we just undo all of these Allen key things. So just undo these two. So now we just need to pop these off. bit of a bench but it's not too bad and then this just wiggles out like that and it's out of the way so. that's out of the way take this hose out of its little clamp and pop it over the back so it's out of the way pop the PCV out back here is the biggest pain in the ass and this tool's broken so it doesn't hold the bit properly recommend undoing this one first because if you do all, undo all the other ones it'll put more pressure on this and make it harder to loosen it's hot, it's hot, it's hot still hot from being run and do the others. Now yeah, that one's loose, it should be fine. So once you've got all these undone, under your cap. Now what I wouldn't what I didn't do in the demonstration before was uh, the next step. So after you pull this off, place it to the side. You want to block this your oil um, filler. Uh, I didn't do it before because it was such a quick demonstration of how to get the plugs out, so I wasn't, there wasn't going to be any time spent with them out. Uh, but now I'm actually going to have to replace all the coils. I'm going to have to replace all the coils. It's going to take a bit longer. So I just want to pop this up. It's still hot. Undo the plug. Voila. Now we'll grab one of our replacements. It's like 487 degrees Celsius in Brisbane today. So I want to get this job done quickly as possible. So have a look here. They're definitely the same, same plug, same on the ends. These have got some dielectric grease already in them. So I'm not going to bother with that. I'm pretty sure the plugs are good. So I'm so confident. But I am not going to check them. How about you put the plug on first? Okay, let's put that plug on upside down. No. So, coil one replaced. And the first five are all pretty easy. The back one, as per my previous video, is the tricky one. Off. Have another coil. I don't know why these 
these come packaged in singles. Like I said before, when we were driving, if you're going to replace coils, because one's failed, you should do all six, not just one. One will keep you going, but you're in definitely going to get another failure shortly after. So, not this one here. Come on, plug. You can do it. There we go. Ow, ow, ow. Everything's still hot from the drive still. I've got fat fingers, so it makes this doubly difficult. Obviously, ideally, wait for it to cool down. But I don't have time because I have to go somewhere. I'll pry it out of the screwdriver. Oh no, this one's packaging is different. Now the same part number. They appear visually to be the same part. But this one's, where these just had staples in them, this one's like fully sealed. So I'm going to need some skizzers. So the last one is the hardest uh, before I've, I just popped them all up a little bit with the screwdriver including the last one and now and I've already replaced these ones this one here it's just because the shape of the engine bay and how far back the engine is it's a little bit trickier it's not that difficult it's the spark plug that's the real drama and here's our last one so, like all of them, you sort of got to start it, but don't push it all the way in before putting the plug on, which you can't see because the hands are in the way. And then push them down. Alright. Now that is how you replace the coil packs in a BA Falcon. The, you know, putting the cover back on and putting the intake back on, that's all just reverse of what you just saw me do to take it off. And if you can take it off, you can put it back on. So what I'll do now is I'll put that back together. And then we'll start it. We'll take the car for a drive and test it. Make sure I have fixed the problem. If not, bugger. I'll have to get the plugs out. But I don't think it's those. Pretty sure it's not the plugs. So here we are, taking a test drive. Um, just one other thing to note, the other symptom of the core pack problem assuming it's right because the car's driving perfectly at the moment. I haven't given a low test yet. Um, the other symptom is excess fuel consumption because the car's just not burning fuel efficiently. So it's not making power so is it, you know, you've got to burn more fuel to make the same power as you want. So we're not quite up to temp yet. So we'll give it a few minutes and then I'll give it a load test on the way out to Super Cheap to pick up all the goodies I ordered online. It certainly feels a lot smoother. Yes, the light went red. So I get to launch it. The, immediately the idle I think is a lot better than what it was. It's idling lower but not dipping or moving at all. Put the AC on, so it's to create extra load on the system, and it's hot on the balls. Boring it. Most of it there. Seemed to be perfect. Now let's do four from here. Oh yeah. Pulling, no worries. Excellent. So that's it, that's the core packs fixed, that has fixed the uh, misfire problem, so diagnosis is correct, repair solution is correct, car's tip top. Uh, that's the first actual repair I've had to do on the Falcon uh, since I bought it uh, two years ago, 18 months, two years, something like that, 60,000 Ks, 50,000 Ks, 5. 
been driving it, so she's been pretty reliable. Uh, obviously maintaining the car well is a key part in that. But uh, yeah, this is the first actual fault that has developed uh, mechanically. There's a tick in the air conditioning, there's sometimes a bit of water comes out of the AC into the foot well. These are all typical Falcon problems and they're all known solutions and I will get around to fixing all of those things in due course. But for now, I'm going to sign off, so peace out. And I hope you all enjoyed your Australia Day, unlike me, which I spent it fixing the Falcon.